going on everybody juniors fishing company here um, I've been messaged a couple times about a couple posts I've been I've made the last couple weeks about techniques and stuff with a lot of marabou jigs um, this is a six cents swim jig head I think this might be half ounce um, but a couple guys asking about feathers and marabou and um, and stuff like that and so I thought instead of just writing back to him I'd make a, a video and post it um, I've, in the vise I've got a 5 aught 3 8 ounce uh, Gamagatsu swim bait weighted swim bait head um, it doesn't have the the weed guard that this one does um, I like a weed guard, but they're super annoying to tie around. Um, so I thought I'll start with a, a jig without a weed guard on it. Um, I'm going to make this as quick as I can. I'll do some fast forwarding through some um, repetitive stuff, but um, it's a pretty long tie. So I'm going to make this as quick as I can. Um, you can follow um, us uh, at Junior's Fishing Company on Instagram um, and yeah let's get to it so 5 odd hook 3 8 ounce head marabou looks really big when it's dry but it mats down really really well um, so to help keep some bulk on the jig I'm going to actually put some quarter inch Blaine chocolate body tubing. Um, that'll help keep some bulk. I'm going to do some other things to help keep bulk as well, but this is one of the main things that helps keep it, um, have it have a bigger profile. So to get this ready, this is like a one and a half inch strip. I'm going to just melt the ends just a little bit and I'm gonna take my hook it's not in the vise right now um, now this is pretty untraditional because traditionally um, if you're fly tying with this material you would just put it in the front well uh, that's not gonna fit so I'm gonna go in from the back and that's why you want to melt the tips of this because if you don't all of those are going to start to fray now it might fray a little bit because I'm going to be kind of working it around this bend but at least the melted tips will kind of stick together a little bit better um, again it's not going to be perfect especially if on a hook if you've got like um, some bait keepers uh, you'll want to remove those but uh, on a jig like this there's a little bump from the hook up uh, like a skirt collar holder or something like that that you'll have to kind of work around too but so I'm gonna put this all the way up as far as I can and I'm gonna put the hook back in my vise okay I don't even have thread on or anything like that yet um, I want to figure out where I want this bump to be I want to be careful with the um, the hook gap but really you don't have to this is a super wide gap hook anyway um, so the only thing I'm thinking of I'm gonna put a rattle on this bait and I want to make sure that that rattle isn't gonna stick off the back of the hook so that's gonna be my one main concern so I can just push this pretty I can be pretty rough with it um, and make sure my rattle is gonna sit not too far but I also want enough room ahead of this to make sure that I'm gonna get some good marabou on there um, and once I kind of like where that is I'm gonna put down a little bit of super glue And then for the video, I'm going to be doing 
black thread just because it's easier to see. But when I'm tying something down like this, I want a ton of thread pressure. And even with 210, um, I'll still break my thread sometimes. I like 280 UTC, um, but I only have it white. Um, so to wrap down, I'm actually going to do, this is just power thread, uh, 140 denier, um, but it's as tough as nails. So um, that glue is going to hold it pretty well. Again, I want some good wraps on there. A lot of thread tension. Um, so now I'm actually going to do a couple quick half hitches. And I'm going to cut my thread again. Again, just because I have this big head that I'm trying to work around. So now I put it in reverse of what most people would do. I'm going to take it out again and I'm going to push back this tubing and this is where it's really going to start to fray. I'm going to push it back all the way and then I'm going to push it back up so it kind of makes like a little cone. And then this is where I really want to see where I want that cone to be. So I always, I don't put any super, super glue on here yet because um, I want to see where I want my big bump to be. So I'm going to put some, before I put any glue down, I might even end up moving this. Um, there's some tension on here so that I can manipulate that a little bit and kind of see if that's where I'm going to want it to be. Um, and that doesn't look too bad so I've got some room here um, for the marabou and all that other stuff and I've still got plenty of room down here eh, that's gonna stick off a little bit that's alright so I you know you say yeah that looks good so I'm gonna come back up Snip my thread. And then I can just trim these off. Alright. So now that I've got that all trimmed up, I'm gonna put my put some thread wraps down to kind of mash all that extra tubing. Now I don't want my thread to come any farther up, because then it's gonna impact how this body tubing folds back. So I really want to be careful. I really want to kind of see, because if I wrap too far up here, that's not going to go back. Because that's how I'm going to have it. But I'm still, I'm going to wrap a ton of stuff behind here, some, um, some feathers and my rattle and stuff like that. So I don't want, I just want to be careful about that. So I'll put down some of my glue and then I'll be done with my power thread I'm gonna to switch to my 210 and again I would normally use white because this is gonna be an all-white jig with a little purple and tinsel but um, it's gonna mostly be white but really you're just gonna see the thread at the at the top of the hood, by the head anyway, so. Um, now for my rattle. I'm gonna grab my 210. And this is just a plastic it's a plastic rattle, but it's got a little metal ball at the bottom. I mean, this thing, you can hear this thing across the street. Um, I think I bought this from, might have been Lure Parts Online or something. Um, so now, that's going to stick off a little bit. That's 
not going to be the biggest problem. What I want to do though is I want to make sure again I don't want my tubing to be impacted too much by where my rattle is. So that shouldn't be too bad. Now I always super mash down my rattles um, just because I mean I still have sometimes you know you have you catch 30 fish on it and it doesn't move then you catch a two pound pike second cast and it it'll rip it off but um, this is pointing up so I'm gonna get that down but I'm gonna put some glue down do a couple wraps and then I'm going to take that off and then I'm going to put that actually right at the bottom of it to kind of lock that in and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get this to go a little bit flatter so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on top of my rattle. I'm going to push down and I'm going to bring my 210 up. And that glue really holds the thread while I'm wrapping it, but it also makes it so, because this is where the fish's mouth is going to be. So you can see now that it's more flush. That way, it, I don't know, you can get as picky as you want about the things that he make, but um, I like it to be flat so it's not lifting any of the marabou or feathers or anything like that so and then I'll come back down here and that isn't going anywhere come back down here that's not going to go anywhere. Alright, so now I've got my rattle, my body tubing. I'm not going to bring my body tubing back yet. It's going to fit nice and snug right there. This is where I'm going to put some of my um, saddle. And I'm going to do maybe one marabou wrap back here too. So this is going to be an all white bait. I've got Four. This is just strung um, rooster saddle. But I'm gonna do one purple. Um, you can use American rooster. Um, I just that's more expensive, and you know I've got one, one American rooster in in blue. But um, you know these packs are like ten bucks. You can get five different colors for the same price as you get one whiting um, so this bait I want this bait typically on a fly I've seen a lot of guys double the length of their hook um, so if this is two and a quarter I mean you could go to five but I've found when you're fishing this with like a spinning rod or a bait caster, you're fishing it so much faster. It's going to sink. It's going to do all these different things. So I prefer to do it longer. I'm actually going to do it to about the back of my brass on my peak, which will be about seven inches. And it seems long, but when you fish it, it fishes a lot smaller than you think. So I'm going to put down my purple first. And I've already cut and trimmed these, and I kind of mashed down the um, some of the stem to make it a little more flat. Uh, but it's always tricky with this rattle to get it to go perfectly straight. But again, you can be as picky as you want. Uh, now I'm going to put my white down. My whites are going to be a little bit shorter than my purple is and 
And again, you just want it to ride as straight as, as you can get it. So I got four white and a purple. I'm leaving all this fuzz on there because that's just going to add, help add some bulk to the back. If you can taper these as much as you want. They can all be different lengths. They can all be the same length. Again, on a jig like this, it's going to be moving fast enough where, um, I mean, you don't need to worry about pushing water, and um, especially with the rattle. And so this is definitely not like a contemporary, you know, you're not going to buy this in a fly shop, but I've had a hard time giving up my bait caster and spinning rod. In exchange for a fly rod. I have fly rods, but... Um, so now to make sure that that all stays. More... Super glue. And I think I might be able to do... One wrap. There's construction going on right outside my house, so if you hear beeping. Alright, so now I've still got all that room for Marabou. I'm going to do one little marabou wrap. So I've already prepped all these feathers. So you'll take the, the whole feather and preen it back. And then just with the tips, you'll wet it with your tongue or a glass of water or whatever. And this is where I'm going to wrap it. And then I'll use my hackle pliers on the other side to wrap. Now, what I do with my marabou, these are just two that I've got sitting here. This is just from Shield. Whenever I buy a marabou, I'll take, if quarter ounce, ounce, whatever, this is a quarter ounce, I'll take all of it out, go through it, and you can see that I've got all my stems right there. So all, every single one of these feathers is usable. Because in a quarter ounce pack, you might find half, three quarters are good, and the rest is kind of junk. So it saves you a lot of time just to go through it first. I'm actually going to wrap this with two feathers. Kind of line them up. And then right where that stem, right where my kind of, you can call this a tag or whatever, this is right where I want to, this is where I'm going to start wrapping, so that's where I'm going to stop my thread. I'm actually going to come up on the rattle. Grab my hackle pliers. Normally I have a glass of water next to me, but I do not have it. So I'm going to kind of just preen these back. Give it a good wrap. I get two out of here. And then I'm going to wrap my thread right where that stem right where the feathers stop and marabou is really forgiving so you can wrap around it a bunch of times and not worry about it's 
delicate though too. I don't have my comb. So now, just gonna comb this marabou out. All right, so now, a couple more good wraps. And again, I don't need to worry about a whip finish because I'm gonna put some glue down here anyway. Now I can go to the front, push that back, and I'm ready to roll. So this is where I'll do some fast forwarding. Um, I'm, I'm going to do two marabous. I've got these stacked ready to go. Um, I'm going to do two whites right here. And then I'm actually going to take some strong fuzzy fiber. And I'm going to kind of push it around almost 360. I'm going to leave a little bit of gap where my hook is. And this is what's going to help add a little bit more bulk. I'm not going to add a ton of it. I took a little strip off of the hank or whatever it's called and then double it over and then this is kind of what you end up with and I'm going to end up just tying it in like this and I'm going to wrap it all the way around and then you can see it's going to add just a little bit more bulk but I don't want to do it right by my strung or right by my uh, chocolate body because that's already going to add bulk I want that bulk to kind of come up a little more so I'm going to do a wrap and then I'm going to add that and then I'm going to do two more wraps um, and I'm going to add some tinsel. I'll stop when I do the tinsel um, and um, yeah we'll see how it goes. All right, so now <clears throat> I've got all my marabou wrapped on, and I've got just a little bit of space right up here. Now I could tie off, and then it could just be a little bit of a bigger collar than I prefer, but um, to help add a little bit more bulk, I'm going to actually add a dubbing loop of um, just rabbit strips. 
These are bling rabbit strips, but um, I'm not going to use the orange part. I'm just going to cut off. So I've already done that. So I've got my dubbing loop hair ready to go. I'm going to just get everything back. Do my dubbing loop. Ready. Got my spinner. I don't know what kind of. Uh, this might be Dr. Slick uh, spinner. You can use whatever spinner you want. A little bit of. Just a little. Um, this is Wopsy. Uh, the low tack stuff I like. If I'm doing like a big dubbing loop with a bunch of synthetics and stuff. Um, but with this rabbit, you almost don't even need the fine dubbing. Because it really doesn't go anywhere. And I want to make this as long as I can. Without... Pulling all the way out. And then I'm just gonna come in here and you want sharp scissors. trim off it's just gonna it's mostly under fur anyway so I'll pull tight couple spins comb or brush And this will help add a little bulk on the head because it'll just, it doesn't shrink quite as much as the marabou. Now, usually I'll have a glass of water, I don't have one. So you just gotta suffer through getting some rabbit on your tongue. Now this is pretty long for this little spot. I'm going to pack it in as much as I can. This is where I wish I had a C clamp. Just wrap it as tight as you can.
And I'm just going to jam this in there. I don't really care if it's over the other stuff. I'm doing this for bulk anyway. And this will give me a small collar too with the black thread. Not that it really matters. And again, I would have done white if This will almost have no collar on it. How oh, I like it. The head shape's kind of weird, so you kind of have to wrap with rotating. Just so you know you're getting in there. You can go as many as you want. I know I'm good, but all right. So I could whip finish this. What I'm actually going to do Boy, that black just doesn't want to show I'm going to take a little glue Not a whole lot A little bit of super glue because I don't want to whip finish over all of this rabbit and then I can really just do a quick little half hitch and I'll be good to go it out again and then when that super glue dries I'll put a little see I even still got some glue on there I just don't want a ton of glue because it's just gonna stick to the fur and then it's just gonna mat up and that's not the reason you put that there so this turned out to be about seven inches again it'll swim smaller than it looks because this marabou is going to mat down but with the chocolate tubing the little bit of um, strung fuzz and the rabbit collar it helps add a lot of bulk 
to the bait. So, <laughs> and that rattle is nice and loud. So there you have it. You've got your hand tight swim jig. I'll be doing more videos like this. Um, I've got some chatter baits that I want to do, a couple more swim jigs, um, and then there are some musky jigs that I um, that I really really enjoy doing too. Hopefully. I'm not sure how long this video ended up being, but uh, these take a little bit more time than, you know, a size 12 scud. So hopefully the video is not too long. Um, you can follow us at Junior's Fishing Company on Instagram. You can go to juniorsfishing.com. Um, we don't directly sell these yet, um, but we sell inlines and then some some smaller. Uh, flies and, and, and things like that. So check us out. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, another video soon. Uh, if there's something that you'd be interested in seeing, uh, again these are pretty untraditional flies. Um, I probably wouldn't even call them a fly. It's a jig but um, on the vise. So if there's anything in particular you'd like to see um, tied or something like that, leave a comment below. Send me a message. Um, that's why I'm doing these. Um, I posted a picture like this and then guy asked how and what and where and when. So, um, yeah, see you soon.